Today we're going to talk about 401k plans. Why would you want to start a 401k plan? <clears throat> Here's some of the reasons. You can save for retirement in a tax advantage way. Um, you want to recruit and retain employees. This is a great benefit and I think most employees these days expect their employer to have a 401k slash profit sharing plan. <clears throat> It comes out of the payroll on a bi-weekly basis, so that means it's going into the market on a continuous stream, which is always um, a great advantage uh, when you talk about investing. You've outgrown your SEP IRA, your simple IRA, or in, in your individual 401k it just means you have uh, employees and your employees have been with you for a couple of years, and so you need to level up and go to a 401k plan. One of the things that uh, I think is the least understood is a 401k plan does allow you to make Roth contributions without income restrictions. So that's an important reason why you'd want a 401k plan. Let's just talk about, a little bit about what is, what is a 401k plan. A 401k plan allows participants to contribute part of their before-tax compensation to a defined contribution plan. And a defined contribution plan, the maximum that you can contribute is 66000 uh, for 2023, and if you add the catch-up to the 66,000, the max would be 73,500. The catch-up would come into place when you're over 50. Um, so we always talk about what are, what is made up of in a foreign case slash profit sharing plan. There's employee deferrals and there's employer contribution contributions. So we're going to talk about the employee deferrals right now. So the, elect, the 2003 elective deferral limit is 22,500 plus the 7,500 catch up for a total of 30,000 if you're over 50. So that's, that's a big deduction. I think it's one of the few above the line deductions that's still out there for most, um, most tax filers. <clears throat> And now let's talk about the other part of it, the employer contributions. And employer contributions, here's the different terms you would, you would hear. You know, there's profit sharing contributions, there's matching contributions, there's non-elective contributions, and all of these are employer contributions. And the limit to these contributions is the spread between 66,000 and 22,500, which that number that you would, the maximum of, amount of employer contribution is 43500 for 2023. Um, you know, one of the reasons why you might hesitate to start a 401k plan is because of the complexities. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the complexities. You need to be familiar with some of the basics. So every 401k plan, the 401k deferrals, that 22500 and that 7500 catch-up is tested. Um, the test is called the ADP test, the, and the, the spread between the highly compensated, which those making over 150, and the non-highly compensated, uh, this would also include the owners, um, there's a spread that's tested. So if you have just the highly compensated employees contributing and, and the non-highly compensated don't, then it's going to be a problem. Um, the way we solve for this is we do safe harbor contributions. There's three safe harbor contributions. Uh, there's the basic match, was, which is 100% up to the first 3% of income. You commit to matching that, plus 50% of the next two, which means a total of five. Or you could do the enhanced match, which is 100% up to 4% of income. So if the employee does 4%, you match 4% of their income. And then non-elective contribution, which is usually paired with a profit sharing, or it is a profit sharing, is 3% to everyone that's eligible. All right, let's talk a little bit about how we, we start a 401k plan. So you need to get, there's three actors when you start a 401k plan. You need to engage a third-party administrator, which they complete the tax filing, the 5500. Uh, they complete uh, or help you set up a plan document, and they complete the test that I talked about. You also need a record keeper for a website where the employees go to. Um, they produce statements and account balances, and they also custody the investments. You also need an advisor to be your advocate to help with costs and fiduciary, you know, fiduciary investments. And, uh, you know, the advisors also can act as a consultant with you, help you with your fiduciary responsibilities. 
Who's eligible to participate in a 401k plan? This is the most restrictive requirements. Those that are age 21 and have worked for one year. So it could be less restrictive than this. You could go 18 years of age. Everyone's eligible who's 18 and has worked 30 days for you. Here's the uh, critical things with a safe harbor. These, are the, these will be the deadlines for next year. The deadlines for 2022 have already passed, but you need, if you're going to start a, a safe harbor 401k, you need to engage the third party administrator and the record keeper by mid August, uh, because they have to get the document ready. The first notice out to the employees is September 1st, and they need 30 days, um, to make decisions before the plan becomes effective on October 1st. There are some there are some alternative options here that you can consider if you don't want to do a safe harbor. You can do a discretionary match of 50% up to 6% of income. Uh, you can add a vesting schedule to this. And if you want to do a non-elective safe harbor, which is uh, much like a profit sharing, you would usually pair this with a profit sharing contribution. The deadline for that is uh, for 2023 would be December 1st of 2023. But you need to get this process started in November. Um, just want to leave with one dis quick disclosure. This video is designed for educational purposes only. Always consult a professional for any specific situations you are considering.